Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today's episode, we're going to take a look at a newer business card slash charge card to hit the market, and that is Divi. So typical fashion, we'll talk about Divi, and of course their parent company, Bill.com. We'll go over the earnings, redemptions, rewards, everything you need to know to figure out if this is a card worth considering adding to your wallet or not. So, of course, if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button, and let's get to work. So, batting lead off here, you know, again, Divi, it's funny because this one kind of got on my radar because at the time they were offering some crazy offer. If the offer's still around, I'll link to it down below, but I don't think it will be by the time you're watching this. Um, so, I was taking a look at it, trying to learn a little bit more about it, and here's how we have a video for it. So, typical fashion, we'll do the classic, did you know, first. So did you know? So technically Divi is uh, owned by Bill. So Bill.com is a cloud-based kind of software for like small to mid-sized businesses. So you're talking like invoice processing, accounting, back office type stuff, right? So Bill actually acquired Divi in 2021 for about $2.5 billion. So they clearly think this thing is going somewhere. So $625 million was in cash. The remainder was going to be in stock. Now some numbers where they had a pitch deck. So you're talking about Divi at least here had $100 million in annualized revenue for $4 billion annualized total payment volume and 100% revenue growth year over year. So I can put the TechCrunch article down below if you want to jump more into that. So when you see a pitch deck like that, at least gets my interest, right? Because, you know, someone believe in these guys a lot to pay off that much money and their numbers at least are pretty serious. So, of course, you know, Bill.com again being, so you can think of Bill.com, I haven't used it, but it's kind of like they're, they'd be a competitor to like Brex or Ramp or Expensify, right? All of which have their own credit card as along with their own, you know, kind of like business management invoicing software, right? So if you're bill.com, like, hey, I need a credit card too, because that's what we all do. We expand a credit card, so let me go ahead and acquire one. And this one does have some interesting earning rates to go along with it. So with that, though, let's go in order here. We'll talk about the earnings and redemptions. Now, overall, you know, I originally thought this was a cash back card, but it looks like you're going to be earning points. Now, this comes from Bank Rate. They wrote an article about this. So here are the earnings and redemptions. So you can do travel, cash back, gift cards, and statement credits. The problem is, weirdly enough, travel is one cent per point. That's travel through Divi, not, not travel partners or transferring points out or anything like that. They basically have their own portal. If you wanted to go cash back, you're talking about 0.52 cents a point. So basically a huge haircut, gift card, same deal, and then statement credit, honestly, even lower, which, which was odd. Now... And cutting back in here really quick in post, you know, I actually did get this card for a sign-up bonus, and there'll be a link down below if you're interested. Good. One thing you do learn when you get the card is that you can see on screen to accrue rewards, you must use at least 30% of your credit line. Of course, pay the balance. And if you want to redeem rewards, you also have to have been using the card for at least one year, accrue 5,000 points or more. And of course, again, as we said, statement, credit, cash, back, gift cards, or travel. So now that I do have the card, I didn't want to add that um, again I will be just using it for the sign up bonus but now back to the rest of the video so that is kind of unfortunate because this doesn't really come off as a travel card but we'll talk about that more on the end so at least you know now what you can expect now again the multipliers and earning rates are interesting enough here again so we'll take a look at the card now we'll spend some time here so here we go here's the card there is no annual fee which is good but multipliers you can see this is a little bit different than our normal slide that we use we have a chart so again you have a category on the left restaurants hotels software subscriptions and of course and everything else now, when you go through the application process, you basically have to choose, you know, how you want to be billed weekly, semi monthly or monthly. And that's going to dictate how many re how the rewards earnings that you get. So if you're weekly, you can see you're going to have to pay your bill every single week, obviously. But you're going to get seven back at restaurants, five at hotels, two on software subscriptions and then one point five on everything else, which is actually pretty good considering, you know, it is technically they're aiming it at travel, restaurants and hotels, not too bad. Semi-monthly as well doesn't, isn't really that bad either. Um, 4X, 3X, 1.75, which seems odd, and then one. Monthly, you know, once you get to monthly, which is again how you're normally going to be built, then it's nothing really to write home about. But weekly and semi-monthly, not too bad. So that is how they do the earnings and rewards. Now, in addition to that, if you go through it, they have some other benefits that you can get for having this card. So if you go to their site, they basically, they have kind of, I'm not going to call them like Amex offers if you're familiar with those, but they have partnerships with other business vendors and services that you might be interested in. And it, I think it is worth taking a look at because one is a no annual fee card. Number two, there are quite a few options as you can see and quite a few savings. I mean, you can see Google ads, so $150 saving, 
FedEx office, you know, Verizon, things like that, Lyft. So I mean, there's a, still a few travel things, Avis car rental. But, you know, if you went through there and, and set up your car, I mean, you could get a lot enough savings right there. So that is also another part of the card that they're pitching. Now, in addition to that, some other benefits or details of the card. So the main thing here is that this is, it's, it's like, I would call it almost a corporate card, right? So most of the business cards we talk about are really small business cards, right? Um, so really with small business, again, it's, you're still kind of making a personal guarantee on that card. But with corporate cards like this one, there is no personal guarantee. It means if something actually happens to the business or something like that, you, know, you didn't personally guarantee it with your name and your own credit which can be very beneficial. Now, in addition to that, they are gonna give you kind of like unlimited employee cards as well as unlimited virtual cards. Again, a lot of small business cards tend to there is a cap on, I think there is a cap on how many um, employee cards you can usually get. I haven't yet met anyone who's met that cap, but there's generally a cap. So this one there's unlimited. You can also do virtual cards, which is also pretty helpful. Now, of course, I think at some point Divi will tie in more heavily to the Bill.com um, software. Again, I haven't used that myself, but again, that's kind of when you look at competitors like Expensify and or Ramp. You know, they offer rewards-based cards, and the rewards-based cards aren't like the most amazing in the world, but they have such a tie into their software that it makes it you know advantageous for folks who need to manage tons of employee accounts because you're going to get a lot more. You generally get a lot more controls rules that you can put in place, expense tracking features, things like that with this software and card combinations than you would with like your just Chase Inc. business card handing it out to legit employees. So that's kind of the other part of this. So what do we think here? I really, I really just think it's weird to brand this as a travel card because when I look at it, when I look at corporate cards like this, on one hand, I get it because, you know, a business could be traveling quite a bit. Um, but Really, in my opinion, if you're going to go with this such low valuations on the cash back option, I think that's that's the part that hurts. Again, I haven't done the math. I'm trusting Bankrate on this. They wrote their article in early December of 2022, so I think it's still valid and relevant. You know, I think that's really the problem I have. I, I mean, I, I think you, you would want to give businesses the flexibility of being able to go travel or go through or go cash back. So if you're putting that much spend on it, I can see why it would be valuable. You know, just statement credit it, no big deal. But to lose half the points valuation on statement credit or cash back really seems tough. You know, now in the future, if they have it on the radar to, you know, add in transfer partners, uh, then I think you could potentially be talking about something because those multipliers are quite good if you're comfortable paying weekly. Now, again, I believe this is a charge card. So either way, you're going to have to pay at the end of the month, no matter what, you know, you can't carry a balance. But even if you wanted to go buy my monthly, I think that one would be good as well. But yeah, I just see this the cash redemptions hurt too much and they don't know yet enough about their travel. I mean, you can get one cent a point, but really um, I would hope they look to expand out to transfer partners or something like that. Then you could get a ton, a ton more of outsized value given the point. So I'd keep that in mind. If you're in the market for a corporate type card, you know, it is potential interesting play. I think we just need to know more about the, the bill.com and Divi partnership as far as software goes. That's one of the things that ramp and Expensify put front and center. You know, for everyone else, I would probably pass on this because even though you, you could probably do better on your regular travel cards where you have transfer partners where you know what kind of value you can actually get. But anyways, that has been a look at Divi. So, of course, if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. So we're posting content just like this every week and right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. Of course, question to you guys. If you're in the market for actual corporate cards, you use any of this software, sound off down below on your opinion of this or the other competitors love to get your thoughts on that as well as what do you think about these actual redemptions are they a deal breaker for you anyways guys thank you so much for watching i talk to you very soon in the next one